Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about some things that I haven't talked about yet with the wedding planning process. So before you click off, because it's a wedding video, just know that this might be interesting to you because there are things that I haven't shared yet and I believe they're going to be really important to people if they're single, married, not engaged, getting engaged possibly because I think every part of the engagement process and before you get engaged is unique and special. It's all a journey and I feel like my perspective like two weeks before our wedding is so different than when we first got engaged and I was like I just wish I had somebody to tell me all of these things so I'm going to sit down and tell them all to you and I want to be open and honest about what my wedding planning journey has been like because it has not been perfect and I've learned a lot about life and you know we've experienced most that life has to offer through our engagement. You have to remember life doesn't stop like other people's lives don't stop just because you're getting married or just because you're getting engaged or because you're in a happy time that doesn't mean that everybody else around you is going through the same thing or that that's their journey i think it's really important to touch on and i'm really excited to share some of these things with you guys because i think a part of being a blogger is you know it's fun to look at super positive and and really upbeat content but sometimes you just need some realness because nobody's lives are perfect nobody's Instagram is really like what it looks like I also have some really poignant tips about wedding planning that I want to share with you guys about like financial things and just different things that I wish I would have known before and things that I would strongly recommend to you so before I babble on any longer let's go ahead and get started with the things Things I wish I would have known before I started wedding planning. If you guys have watched any of my videos through this process, I might have given different advice throughout the way, but it was the advice that I knew at the time. So it's just based on the experiences that I'm currently having. I feel, even though I haven't had a wedding yet, I know a lot about them at this point because I've been planning for so long and I've just learned a lot along the way. So I just want to share some of the very technical things with you guys first and then we'll kind of get into some of the emotional aspects of getting married and the life challenges that you might deal with. The first thing I want to share is, and I might not have been able to say this in the beginning because you don't realize how important it is to hone in on what's important to you for your reception or your ceremony or whatever you have going on. Um, you might not have a budget. Like we never sat down and said, this is our budget. We kind of just went, you know, vendor by vendor and said, okay, that's a reasonable price for this service. Sometimes I think that's the best way to do it because you're not having like this monster budget. And a budget might make you spend more because you're like, oh, I have this much money left over. Let's just throw it to this. Where you can kind of get your money's worth for certain services. And there are services worth paying more for and there are services worth paying less for. So you just have to decide. Look to where you can cut corners. So you might not think you'll be able to cut corners, but you might be able to. So... Luckily, mine was like a last minute thing. I really didn't have to cut corners because we really didn't like go extra for anything that we did. We were really reasonable and that was something I was like super proud of us. Like we were so reasonable in everything that we did and we were able to keep to a like not a budget but just a reasonable way of having a wedding because you don't want your wedding to put you in debt for the start of your marriage like that's not a great way to start you want to be able to like you know pay off some things or like do some things around your house or just you know start your marriage off the right way even if it's just a honeymoon or something fun to do my thing is if I could have cut corners I would have never gotten a photo booth because it was something that I just threw into my package of something that I wanted and I look back and it was like seven hundred dollars like I did not need to have a photo booth and I don't even know why I got one. It was just one of those things where, oh, your wedding's a year away, let's throw a photo booth in there, let's do that. And then you look back and you're like, why did I do that? I could have gone without that. My other piece of advice would be to pay things off a couple of weeks in advance. So we just paid everything off like three weeks before our wedding and I highly recommend it because when I went to go pay certain things off, some of the bills were a little bit higher than what I had thought. So just remember that paying things off a couple weeks in advance, you get that sticker shock then, not two days before your wedding when it's really due or the week before your wedding. You can kind of just process it and be like, you know what, it is what it is. Rather than the week of your wedding being like really stressed out about all the little details and then seeing a bill that's way larger than you were expecting. And I could see how a meltdown could happen. I really could. So that's one thing to think about. Another thing I think of, like no joke, since October, I've been 
I swear, and I'm not just being dramatic, I had things to do every single morning for this wedding for a month and a half, and I am a homebody. I used to be super go, 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 but now I like like to relax and just sit at home and watch Live PD or Real Housewives or something stupid and drink coffee. I don't like to go, 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 so being on the go, go, go stresses me out a little bit. And I feel that I can't imagine having to do all the things that I've spread out over a month and a half because I do have long engagement and I do have the time to know that these things take time that most people do in like the week before their wedding. My next piece of advice comes from my own personal thoughts because we are talking wedding bands at this point because it's one expense that you don't really think of. You don't sit around and say, oh my gosh, we still need to buy wedding bands. You just think, oh my gosh, we still need to buy wedding bands. And it could be a week before your wedding or it could be three, four, five, six months before your wedding. Um, I found one that I loved for my fiance and he would not pick one out like we kind of went He tried some on and we found styles that we liked but he was like I'm not picking mine out You can pick it you can pick you know one out of any of these like he didn't even give me a couple that he liked so I went back and I found one that I loved and I thought was so nice that he had tried on and I bought it and I knew it was ring size because he did try them on and it was super cute. I was able to give it to him and just kind of see his reaction because he didn't know what he was getting and that was really cool. I recommend that. Just kind of go on your own and surprise your fiance because girls get the surprise. Like I had zero, zero idea what my ring was going to look like when that box open when I was sitting next to him and he opened that box and I saw my ring I was like oh my gosh we never went ring shopping we never went into the jewelry store and tried anything on nothing like nothing so when he opened the box and there was like this beautiful ring something that I probably honestly never would have picked out for myself because he ended up having better taste the fact that he found something so beautiful and thought of me that's how I wanted him to feel I want him to think oh my gosh she thought of me when she saw this so wedding bands can be just as special didn't pick out my engagement ring some girls do and I you know to each their own I just can't imagine him opening that box and me knowing what was going to be inside of it yeah and I, I i just can't believe it like i can't because that was half the shock like my face in that picture was because i saw that ring and i was like you know what i mean like that's half the excitement being the first out of my friends to get married i'm like you do not you will not go to the jewelry store you will not design a ring because i see it happen on like youtube youtubers do it and i just can't imagine if i didn't have that moment that's where i'm coming from like i said to each their own but if I didn't have that moment of him opening the box and me seeing a ring that like he picked out and put together for me and just knowing that that came from his heart and that's what he thought of when he saw me and we never really ever going into a store and being like, oh, I like that style or that style. Just him kind of being like, this is a beautiful ring and this reminds me of her and this is her ring. This is the ring I'm going to ask her to be my wife with. That is something so special. So I kind of felt the same way when I bought his wedding band. I was like, this is the wedding band that he will wear and he will, it will be a symbol of our marriage. And those are important things. I got to go and pick out my wedding band because I didn't know, especially like not to be technical, but if you have any type of diamonds on your band, you have to find a similar size diamond either in the band or in a cradle, whatever you get. I tried all the cradles on because I have the type of ring that needs a cradle. I hated every single cradle. Believe it or not, like I like big everything, big fake eyelashes, big fake you know lips kind of like overlining your lips like hoops I like all that gaudy stuff like I loved how beautiful my engagement ring was it was just like so elegant I didn't want anything to take away from it and all of the cradles were so loud and they were just taking away from my engagement ring and you couldn't it looked like a completely different thing and I'm gonna have to wear this band for the rest of my life so we were able to it was the last one I tried on I was able to you know put the cradle in and put it on and it was matched the diamond on the sides perfectly and it matched everything so beautifully and I loved it. Last piece of advice for you guys at this point in my wedding planning process that's kind of technical would be think about the extras that you might want for the ceremony or the reception. So do you want programs at your ceremony? That's something that a lot of people don't really think of and it is something that you might want. It's a nice touch. People might not know who's in your bridal party or what that person's name is but they think they look familiar or you grew up with that person but your cousin from over here haven't seen them in 20 years and they'll look at the program they'll be like oh my gosh that's who 
You know, it's kind of cute. It gives your guests something to do while they're waiting because I feel that no ceremony starts on time. So it just gives people something to do and look at and think about. Another thing would be maybe you want bathroom kits in the reception bathrooms. That would be something, you know, really nice to think about. Kind of just having those little things like people do some flip-flops if you have heels on or they'll do little hair brushes. Just cute things to put in the bathroom. That's always a really nice touch and it makes it feel really homey. The next thing that I thought about would be a groom's cake. So if you're having like a really big rehearsal dinner or maybe you're having it somewhere fancy, one of the parents is hosting it, you might want to, you know, spend some money, go to where you're getting your, your wedding cake done or even have like a family friend do it and just see if they can make a groom's cake. It's kind of a cute way to surprise your groom with something that might be in their interest. You know, your wedding cake is big and beautiful and kind of what you want. I don't even know if my fiance knows what style I picked out for our wedding cake. I was just like, oh, I like this picture. Nice. And that was it. Like he hasn't asked, he paid for it and didn't ask a question. So <laughs> I mean, he'll see a groom's cake and it'll be something out of his interest. And then, you know, that just makes it fun. And it just starts the weekend off on a really good tone. In my opinion, if you've ever been in a wedding or you've ever had your own wedding and you agree or disagree, but that's my last piece of like technical advice for wedding planning is that just kind of save money and really think about the extras that might come up in the end and if you want them because they do take time to create and you need to let people know. My gosh, my mom just sent me a picture of biscottis that she's making for the wedding. <laughs> Lastly, I just wanted to break down and, you know, kind of talk to you guys a little bit on what I've been feeling you know, two weeks till the wedding. Very exciting. We just got our marriage license a couple days ago. So I wrote down some thoughts because I do understand finally what people say when they get stressed out because all the way through I was like, oh, this is so easy. I have to, can take my time. We have a long enough engagement where I don't have to rush to do anything. I had everything booked by January and I had like 10 months to go where I could just chill. And then a month before the wedding, you look around and you have a meeting with every single person, hair trials, makeup trials, a bachelorette, like you have 80,000 things to do. And I know there's worse things in life. I don't want this to come off as like complaining by any means. I'm just trying to be real if you guys are doing the whole big wedding thing. This is what it looks like. So I never understood why brides would be like stressed out. But now that there's two weeks to the wedding, I get that. And this is what I think about. I'm like, okay, like today's Friday. I have, you know, this is my last normal weekend off. I start next week and it will be like, okay, a week from today I'll be getting married and it's gonna be a lot of the last minute things. And I think next week, like the week before your wedding, it's gonna be very sacred and special because it really is the last week where you're kind of engaged. The week of your wedding is gonna be, you know, a lot of family out of town coming in and it's gonna be a lot of, not overwhelming things, but you're not gonna have a lot of time to like sit and reflect on how your life has changed or the things that you feel very lucky for. And I think that's something to really remember when you start to feel overwhelmed, how blessed you are to have this all happening in your life. I keep saying, I cannot wait to get out of work on a Saturday and go to the sushi place that I love and get my nails done and not have a single worry in my head about a wedding or what I need to do for a wedding. As much as you like wish your engagement away and you're like, oh, I can't wait for like that month before, you know, for my bridal shower and then everything Thing from there on out you have to realize that it might be really stressful no matter how prepared you are and that's just me being honest and real life changes things change relationships change people change things change and you have to be ready for that because they say weddings and funerals bring out the worst in people and I wouldn't deny that I really do feel like that is true but you kind of just have to stay true to who you are and realize that it like I said while I haven't had my own wedding, it's one day. You have one day and then it's over and then the rest of your life with that person. So whatever drama may have occurred throughout a wedding planning process, people need to realize then once that wedding's over with, was any of that drama worth it? And this is just me being real. This is me taking my experiences just in life and putting them out there because I think everything can seem so, so perfect on Instagram and everything. But I could tell you the month of October was one of the hardest months ever. Just being real. Life was stressful and I feel deal with a lot as an engaged couple, like with everything that life can bring our way. And I'm ready for a new month and new beginnings. And that's kind of what my horoscope was saying. Like this is gonna be the end of a very sentimental chapter in your life and you're gonna be starting a great new one. And that's how I feel. I'm ending a really great chapter, being engaged, having that experience, getting engaged on my 23rd birthday. And just, I feel like I've grown so much just as a person. I also, and I don't know if anyone else 
you know, agrees with this and I'm kind of just pouring my heart out. I don't know what it's like to have a shorter engagement or a longer engagement, but I like literally said to myself, you know, maybe if we had a shorter engagement, things wouldn't be this way. Certain things wouldn't be this way. And that's what kind of kills me. And I think God's timing is everything and everything happens for a reason. And there are things that there's no explanation for them sometimes, but I, I did find myself guilting myself saying, what if we did just have like a year or less? Or what if we did have, you know, like just went and got married immediately? Like would there be, you know, people that would be healthier or, you know, people that would still be around or relationships that wouldn't be so broken? Like would there be things be so different? And that's kind of where I'm at. I know I'm pouring my heart out, just letting it all out there for people to judge and know. And I know there's people that watch these videos for the wrong reasons, not because they're your biggest fan, but because they really don't like you and they kind of want to know what's going on in your life. And honestly, I think there's nothing more respectable than honesty and kind of putting it out there. And if this can help possibly one person by me spewing out for six minutes on my camera at the end of my wedding planning video, it's worth it because everybody needs to know that not everybody's wedding planning is easy and not a lot of it, you know, is is. Not, it's not easy. That's all that I can say. It's not easy. Lives change. Bad things happen. People change. And only time can tell how certain things will work out. But I'm just putting it out there so that if one girl knows that, like, you can't blame yourself for things that happen and you can't. Unless, like, you're to blame. Like, unless, you know, you acted like a jerk. But you can't think like that. So... You kind of just have to keep pushing and thinking positively and know that God's timing is everything and you plan this wedding for this amount of time for a reason and no shorter amount of time would have changed anything and that this was what it was meant to be and that's it. This is how it was supposed to happen. So I'm just trusting in that. So now that I kind of just laid it all out on the table for you guys, I hope you enjoyed my honesty and what I've learned along the way, whether it be kind of technical or just feelings wise, you know, being engaged can be stressful. It's a huge change in your life. And there are people that aren't good with change and I am one of them, okay? So I understand if you're feeling any type of way. Change is hard and there's a lot that comes with these types of things. And there's a lot of nerves just for the wedding day because as much as I love YouTube and social media, I really get very nervous being the center of attention, believe it or not. <laughs> like I get nervous, so I'm nervous. I like, what if I trip? Like what if something bad happens? That's where I'm at. So I'm just being honest with you guys. This is my two week update. This is what I've learned along the way and this is where I'm at. As a person in my life, this is what's going on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe down below. Be sure to share this video with a friend who might find it helpful because this could be good for a single girl, a not single person, a married person. They might be like, yes, girl, I know exactly what you're talking about. So be sure to share this with anybody who might find it interesting. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you all soon again in my next video.